Good morning to you, Mike and Nina. And joining me in the studio is the Treasurer, Joe Hockey. Mr. Mr. Hockey, thanks for joining us. Now, Qantas's immediate reaction to this has been to say, yes, we welcome this as a long-term solution, but they don't see this as a short term. Does the government have nothing to offer in the short term? No, we do. Uh, in the short term, we want to get rid of the carbon tax immediately, which Qantas identified in their own half-yearly statement as a material impact on their, on their bottom line, which was $106 million. So we can get rid of that immediately, $106 million burden on their balance sheet, and in the longer term, uh, you focus on uh, changing the Sale Act to their great advantage, Laura, to give them the chance to compete on a level playing field with other airlines around the world. But Qantas saw a short-term solution as the government debt guarantee, a debt facility. As I understand it, that would have been about in the order of $3 billion. Why was it that Cabinet decided not to go down this path? Because a few weeks ago, you were very open to this. Well, the fact is, uh, we have had a good look at Qantas, at its balance sheet, at the state of play. Uh, it is financially sound as an organisation. It's a big thing to give an unsecured loan of $3 billion of taxpayers' money to a private company. It was the Labor Party that privatised Qantas in 1992. Some of their front bench still haven't caught up with that fact. In 2002, the Labor Party actually advocated to remove all foreign ownership restrictions on Qantas. So they've been skiing down the hill from privatisation to getting rid of foreign ownership and near the bottom of the hill uh, Bill Shorten holds up his hands and says to everyone, let's turn around and ski back up the hill. So, Mr Hockey, sorry to interrupt, but you did a few weeks ago set out the four criteria that Qantas mm. needed to yeah. fulfil in order to get a debt guarantee. Mm. Why did you do that if well, you had no intention of offering it? Well, firstly, uh, the first criteria that we laid down was they are constrained by a specific piece of legislation that affects just their company. Now we're getting rid of that. We're getting rid of it. So we're removing the first criteria, which ensures that they don't need to come to government. But sure, the other criteria set out was, is it in the national interest to have a carrier? Yes, I yeah, think sure the answer it is. is. Yes, yes. Uh, and so the other criteria was they need to get their house in order. Haven't they done that? Well, uh, that's up for the markets to decide. That's up for shareholders to decide. Uh, but ultimately, uh, Qantas needs to run its own company. We need to set them free, Laura. We need to allow them to compete in an incredibly tough global market. And that's what we're doing. So let's look at the changes then to the Sale Act, mm. the, the third part of this <laughs> Sale Act. It would mean more foreign uh, ownership opened up to the domestic arm, not the international arm. If that's arm. what they choose. If that's if what, that's they, what choose, they choose. But that's because certainly opening the path well, to do this because that's, what, that's the operating system that Virgin operates on. Well, and that would be yeah. the level playing field. Well, Jetstar is not covered by the Qantas Sale Act. So Jetstar can engage in a whole lot of joint ventures overseas, as it is. Uh, but the fundamental point is Qantas is being set free to do what it must do to sustain its business model. Now, the directors have a fiduciary obligation to act in the best interests of the company. They are not going to run down the company deliberately. What they have to do, what they have to do is manage the company for the sake of the shareholders and the stakeholders, including customers. So let them do that. Looking at Qantas's uh, labour costs, I think that something like 24% of their revenue goes toward labour costs. This is quite high when you compare it to Cathay Pacific, which I think is about 13%. Uh, so mm. given that, do you see that Qantas now, without these uh, restrictions in place, would look to offshore uh, their maintenance facilities, their catering facilities and other parts of the business. That is uh, the end game here, isn't it? That's a matter for them. Sure. That's a matter for them. Sure. They've but, got to contain their costs. But didn't make this decision without uh, taking into account how Qantas might react to that. So the, that is a, well, a very real live option for Qantas. Laura, there are no blank checks from this government for individual businesses. Full stop. There are no blank checks, whether it be a multi-billion dollar unsecured loan, which I'm sure every business in Australia would dearly love from the government, or be it a guarantee that debts will be repaid, which every business in Australia would dearly love from the government. There are no blank checks. No blank checks. We've, there is no money. 
Labor's left us with $123 billion of deficits, $667 billion of debt. There's nothing left in the bank to write out largesse to individual companies. Just finally, are you ignoring the legislative reality here? Labor and the Greens already blocked this in Senate, but not only Labor and the Gre yeah. Greens, Clive Palmer in the next Senate has expressed strong reservation. Well, I would this. say to them, if they care about Qantas workers, if they care about Qantas jobs, pass the legislation and free up Qantas. Labor believed in that 12 years ago. What's happened is Labor's going back to a pre-1992 position. They effectively want us to nationalise Qantas. Well, that's Labor's position. Uh, I think uh, Ben Shifley would be spinning in his grave at the thought that Labor has no consistent sure. principles. Does the government have a plan B? And if this stalemate continues, even into the next Senate, is this something Cabinet will revisit? Plan B is to improve the economy. That's what we've got to focus on so that all airlines employing Australians can do well. well should Qantas not be keeping up this 65% market share? That's up, up to them. That's their business model. That's up to them. Treasurer Joe Hockey, thanks for joining thanks us. Thanks very much, Laura. Thanks.